Hello guys. Greetings once again. Uh, today we'll be discussing how to send an HTML email using PHP and Swift Mailer. If you're familiar with PHP, you will agree with me that uh, that the built in mail function in PHP has some limitation and security issues. For that reason, it is not recommended for you as a developer to use the built in mail function. Instead, Swift Mailer should be preferable or PHP Mailer. Swift Mailer is a mail is a library. It's a PHP library used for sending more secured emails. The library is easy to use and it has a lot of functionalities which might include attachment of files, images, HTML, it supports CSS, and so on and so forth. So guys, in this tutorial, we'll be learning how to send an HTML email either from the remote server or local host. Now let's give this a try. I've already designed it. I will explain the codes line by line in order for you to understand what I'm talking about. Do not bother yourself what in the course then a link will be provided for you to download the source code and if before I proceed in order for you to make use of Swift Mailer you must have the library files on your root folder you can also achieve that either by using a composer or maybe downloading the library from any source. But this is a library I'm making use of a link shall be provided, provided in order for it to download it. This is the Swift Miller library and on the source code I will show you how to make use of it. Now let's do this. Um, if you are running this script on your local host, I mean from your PC, make sure you have um, make sure you have this made to run in. Okay. Make sure you have this. This made to run in. In order for you to have the code function. Now let's give it a try. I will load the page. Send the name PHP. Send the schema. Receiver. Server type local host. I will explain the reason for this very option. Letter message now click on the send button. Okay. 
Okay, repair was done successfully. Okay. Now, here is the mail. Okay, this is the subject. This is the sender name. The sender email. The receiver. And this is the content of the message. Okay. From the message box, this is what, this is the only thing I added. How are you doing? So this very content was imputed on the source code, so do not be confused about it. Now let's discuss the source code in detail. First and foremost, this is the right session of session part of it. I made it a bookshop 3.3.6 version. It was included on the header on the head session. I used the H1 in order to have this displayed on the screen. I used the break to break the line. Okay. This is the stand made of PNG. This is the image you are seeing here. This PHP, how to send image in PHP file. And the image is on the roof folder here. This is the image. Um, I gave it a bit of 100% and height of 200 pesos. Now, this is the PHP opening tag and closing tag. I use it to encode the response. And this is the response here, reply. Okay. Initially it was declared as an open string. Without declaring it as an open string initially, on page load, it will pop up an error message saying that uh, undeclared variable reply. Okay. And this is the form. I gave it a method of post and action is equal to empty string. That is to say that PHP will process the current page, which is this index.php. Like if you followed our last video, I made us understand that uh, PHP works with the name tag. Okay? Unlike JavaScript that will work with the ID or class. So PHP, in order for it to reference an input element, PHP must work with the name tag. So, in order for me to process or grab the content of any element, the name must be referenced. So in this case, we have the sender name, sender email, receiver email, and so on and so forth. Um, I added the required HTML required attributes here in order for it to demand for an input when you click when you click the send mail button you see it says let's see add this shape this thing can also be manipulated using my javascript but in this case i said to do it from html but if you're building a more subscribed application try as much as possible to uh filter your input uh, from all angles, JavaScript, PHP, and HTML for security reasons. Now, the server type which I talked about later before, the first one is the local host. I gave it a value of 1. The second one is the remote server. I gave it a value of 2. I will explain that later in detail. Then this is the button, the name is send mail. Okay, that's the name of the button. And here is our footer. Now, going back to PHP, I said if it said send mail, that is to say, whenever you click this button, that was the statement other about. Whenever you click this button, that everything within this all the press from here to this point should execute 
You can only execute when you click on that button, otherwise, nothing will happen. Now, when you click on the button, that is to say, when if it said submit mail, the first thing the script will do or PHP will do is to import the sweet mailer library. Make sure that this library is on your root folder in order for it to work with it, or you use a composer, whichever one that is more suitable for you. Now, having included the sweet mailer library, the next thing to do is to declare some variables. I declare these variables. These variables will get the values of those HTML form fields. What I'm talking about is this. Okay? So the first variable I declared was uh, the send mail, send, sender name. We use the post global variable because the form method is what post okay these are the variables declared sender name sender email receiver email server subject and message as we all have here okay please be, do not forget pp works with the name attributes now having declared some variables, we have many variables here, we have around six variables. Having declared these variables, what is the next thing to do? I decided to give the HTML email a simple design. So I declared a variable called FSMG equal to the content of the email. It must it is in HTML. You can design anything of your choice. You may decide to use inline CSS or any type of styling you want to use. This is just it. The HTML message ends here. Then I say, Dear customer, if you remember the message I received, Dear customer, then this is the message. Where is this message coming from? The message comes from the this area on the HTML form. Okay, so the message will have the value of the test area. Here is the dear customer. I didn't think there's a column for you to say receiver's name. It makes sense to say dear receiver name. Then you give the message. This is the footer. Now, switch mail has what we call transport. This transport sent is just like a means at which the message will be sent. Now, in this case, there are two types of transports here. We have the local host transport. This is for use when you are sending the mail from your PC, and we have a send mail transport. This can be used when you're sending from the local um, remote server. SwitchMail has all that type of transport, which you can also Google by saying So this is SwitchMail documentation. You can as well go through it, read more about street mailer and its transport. So there are a lot of transport there, there are SMT transport. But in this case, I'm using either the local host or the same transport. Then what did I do? I say if server where is the server? This is the server variable, okay? I want the contact of the server variable, which is this. Okay. Then I say if server equal to one, if server equal to one, that is to say, if the user should select local host, which for the value of local host is one. Okay. Then if server equal to one use the local host transport 
okay then if the server is equal to you to use the same merchant spot so whenever you are writing um a movie for your coding your project and you know for sure that this site will be hosted you can as well use uh, maybe from the testing machine from your local server you can use this transport in order to test on your mesh services or mesh script then whenever you're hosting your site you change the transport to this or any of the transport of your choice then having determined the type of transport to use then we create the mail say mail are equal to new tweet mail that having the transport here or this as an argument okay then now uh, the next thing to do is to create the, a message I declare the message equal to new sweet mail sweet message I included the subject the subject we have here okay then uh, this thing uh, says set from the mail sender and the sender mail okay set to this include the receiver email where the message we go to for instance when you don't have a variable there you can equally type in the email at once here okay then reply to this is when the user decides to reply to your mail where would the mail go to normally by default the mail goes to the sender which is any value imputed here but most times instead of, instead of having uh, several network issues mail is not delivered to um, the sender it's advisable for you to specify the reply to then the body of the message has two arguments here one the message to be sent which is this from this point to this point that is the message to be sent remember this message also has uh, this variable here that means the content of the test area will be will be included which is this then having included the body of the message to be sent then the type of how the message will be sent should be also should be included as well then I say it should either be a test slash HTML without specifying this on the set body this HTML message would be misinterpreted on the uh, browser or on the mail app so it is very necessary for you to specify this in order to tell the web browser on the mail app that this message is an HTML message then once that is being done then I say result I declare the variable called result equal to mailer send you know switch mail is an object oriented uh, PHP library so if you don't understand object oriented programming you may not understand how this uh, style of coding you may not understand this style of coding then what I'm trying to, to do I'm trying to send everything within this variable and this is the variable here okay so everything from here to this point will be sent then I say if and if this action is successful it returns true it is a boolean it returns true or false at the end of the whole script okay so if I say here if results that is to say if result equal to true if it was successful if it successful send this message that means it is equal to true then I say if result is equal to true 
echoed a message or request was sent successfully. You will receive a response shortly. Then I echoed a meta data that will refresh the page after three seconds. Okay? After three seconds, this reply message will disappear. I remember the reply message will be echoed here. And I told us before that uh, without including um, this reply as an empty string, on page load there will be an error. For instance, let me comment on it and load the page. You see? You see the error here? On the find variable reply and you see the problem here? So this error will not pop up when you click on this button. I mean after filling this form, the error will not be there because there's a, there will be a variable called reply because the variable is already is already here so most times the variables that has responses from commands after execution of an instruction such variables should be declared as an empty string in order for it to have in order not to have errors okay i think that's or about it, do not forget to include your bootstrap CDN link in order to make it a bootstrap. You can also build a more better form than this if you desire. Okay. Now, what will happen if I'm running this script on the local server and I select the remote server remember whenever we select the remote server we are talking about this transport okay so what will happen let's give it a try now let me click it a try It says on court street transport exception process could not be started. You see the problem? Because this is not a remote server, neither is it dedicated or VPS. So in most cases, when you are I know that beginner programmers or developers developers might have this problem. So this is the only way to resolve it. When you're working from a local host, when I say local host, I mean your system, your laptop, desktop, as the case may be. Make sure you use the survey transport. Otherwise, your mails cannot be delivered. But if you're working from a remote server, maybe you bought a shared hosting, or a dedicated server as the case may be, then you must work with this very transport. Having done that, or let me see, I can still automate this. Yes, yeah, since we have something like this, we may say, I may call this receiver name. Okay this receiver name I see it you have a receiver name here I just want to do it in a more automated manner manner I'll declare a variable here Call this receiver name. Receiver name. Let me see if I still have this same stuff on the 
one element. Where is it? Okay, I was not going to save any in here. Okay. Okay, let me set to save. I will pick this variable. I will go to the set there. I want this customer. And I will say this. We will use a period of full stop to concat, to do concatenation in PHP. Now say there, the name here, and the message. Okay, now let's send this mail. And I will say send a name, PHP. Receive a name. Oh, let me say receive a name, let me see. The gates. Receive an email. Subject. Server type. Google host. Then I will say, how are you? Before then, let me check my mail folder here. Delete this. Then let me send the mail. Oh, sorry. This receiver name does not accept text instead of it does accept email. So let me change it. The type should be text instead of email. Let's reload. And I set the gates. I'm gonna search the host. I'm sending my mail. See if it was sent successfully, okay? Now let's check out the mail. See the mail? Dear Big Gates, how are you doing? You see how it works? So. So you may decide to have uh, maybe while building your HTML form, your HTML email, you may decide to have a more powerful design here. Whatever you design here, that is how the mail will look like. I didn't bother myself designing something more powerful. But I always have it in mind that uh, make sure that make sure your CSS is well coded in order for you to have errors. Um, uh, in order for the browser or the Mac app not to misinterpret uh, your design, okay? Having done that, <coughs> I think we have come to the end of today's tutorial. If you have any problem, Please share it with us in the comment section. And uh, do not forget to subscribe to our channel, like our page, Facebook, recommend your friends to like what we're doing, support our project here. If there's any script you deserve to have, do ask on the comment section and I and my team will work towards it in order to have it published. Having said that, I think we have come to the end of today's tutorial. This code will be provided, the link to this code will be provided 
and also again in order for you to download the strip mailer library thank you see you next other time bye